Hey everybody! Blair here. Try to get everything adjusted. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is having a good day. Um, it's dark here now, or pretty much. So, day's pretty much over. But I hope you've had a productive week. Um, and I hope you can join me here tonight. I am loving seeing all the different versions of um, this project, this stitch along project. And for those that are just joining, this is the Wisecraft stitch along springtime posy version. This is the original project. And we are, <clears throat> just ran upstairs, sorry, out of breath. Um, we are stitching this together on air um, over a series of Facebook Live videos here in the Wisecraft Quilts group. These videos will eventually be uploaded to YouTube, hopefully by the end of the week. But I am Blair, Wisecraft Handmade, and um, we are, um, this is I think the third or fourth video that we are doing on this project. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to join in and um, we'll get started here in just a minute. So I was hoping to have more um, opportunity to stitch on mine than I did over the past week. Um, it was a busy week, but I did stitch on it a little bit today and yesterday. So. I was pretty excited about that. So you can see kind of how far I've gotten. So I'll show you more of it in just a second. But I'm building kind of from the center out. I've got some more um, felt pieces that I can sew on. Hey, hey guys, hey Bets, hey Tamara. Um, I've got some more um, pieces that I might sew on as I decide um, what looks best where. But tonight I want to show you um, how to do two different stitches. Um, one of them is called the woven circle stitch, which is kind of a fun stitch to do. It's kind of a woven stitch, um, as the name implies. And also um, a bullion knot or a bullion stitch, which is kind of like a French knot, but um, with a lot more wrap than just a plain um, bullion or just a plain French knot. So I hope you guys um, got some uh, stitch help from the last video and hopefully tonight I won't screw up and we'll do um, some more stitches. So um, with that, I'm gonna flip it around and um, just bear with me here a minute. I'm gonna flip it around and we're gonna start Maybe a little closer. Sorry about my hand there. Here we go. Okay. Actually, let me move this a little bit over this way. So, um, here's where I'm at so far. And um, I did sew on the dimensional flowers that I made last week. Um, I went ahead and sewed those on mainly because I kept changing my mind about where to put them. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to commit. I'm going to sew them down and um, just work around them. So I've already sewn those down. And now what I'm going to do... I added in some chain stitching here. I think I'm going to add some of those um, bullion knots like I was uh, mentioning earlier. I think I'm going to add some of those around the outside of the leaf. So I'll show you how to do that there. And then I think I'm going to add one of those woven circles here in the middle of this flower. Now, as I was looking at this project, I really like the color palette. Although, I am wondering 
if I should add in, I just mentioned this over on Instagram. I'm wondering if I should add in a little bit of pink, like here and there around. And I'm really liking the way it looks. So I think I might. Um, and plus you can see it really well if I decide to stitch with that. So I think I'm going to try it right here in um, this gray flower and stitch one of those woven circles first and we'll see how it looks. You know, it's not the end of the world if I end up not liking it. So, so I've stitched this gray flower down. As you can tell, it's pretty plain. We're going to need to make it a little more interesting. And I don't know if you can see, but I have traced a little circle around the center, kind of off center, but kind of in the center of this uh, flower that I'm going to use sort of as a rough guide. I did it with a friction pen, a black friction pen. Um, I just need a rough circle. And um, something that I use to trace with are these circle templates. I think I got this at Office Depot. Super helpful. So I just found the size that I wanted and I traced around it just enough so that I can see it um, as my guide. Hi, Daphne. Um, oh, Daphne had to hang out washing. Uh, so let's start here. I'm going to start in this circle in this circle that I've kind of roughly drawn and I'm going to set up the um, the woven circle stitch. So to do that, I've got uh, my pink that I'm going to attempt to see if I like the color or not. I think it might be kind of fun to add this color in a couple different places. Hi, Sandra. So and just so that you guys know, I am using two strands. So it's doubled, and this is the Orphil um, Wool Acrylic 12 weight thread that if you ordered a kit for me, um, this is in your kit. So this is that uh, thread. I really like this thread a lot. Um, it's just nice and spongy. I just like the way it feels. So I've got two strands here. I've got a quilter's knot on the end. So what I'm gonna do is, if you can see my rough circle here is I'm going to basically make spokes of a wheel. So I'm coming up here on one end of the circle and I'm going all the way across the circle to the opposite end just like that and then I'm going to cross that so I'm over on this end of the circle you just have to trust me that that's the edge of the circle if you can't see it. Hi, Rosalie. I know, it's so fun to see everybody's work in progress. It really is. So now I'm going to cross that just like that. And then I'm going to cross, make an X over the cross that I just made. So I'm coming up here, and I'm going to go down on this side. And then I'm going to cross here. So just like that. Does everybody see that? So that's what I need that faint little circle area for is just to make those spokes. And I don't think it matters if you do an even or an odd number of spokes, but if you do what I just did, you're automatically gonna have um, an even number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, an even number of spokes. So I'm gonna change my thread and get a longer piece, and then I'll show you the woven part of this. Rosalie, I hope that you are feeling much better. So I'm going to thread this up. All 
right. So now we're going to weave in this circle here. So how I do that is I'm just going to bring up my needle somewhere in the center area. Just in between any of these spokes. And then I actually learned this from Sue Spargo, who I told you about last week. Um, weave with the eye of your needle instead of the point, and then you won't um, you won't worry you won't have to worry about splitting your stitches. It's just a lot easier to use. So I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to do it with um, the eye of my needle. And because I came up between these two, I'm going to go back to the one technically quote-unquote behind it and I'm going to go under if you can see that and I'm, then I'm going to slide it forward and go under the next one and pull it out just like that if you can see that and then I'm going to come under so I'm going to go the, one, the second one that I came out from under, I'm going to go now back under that one. Let me move this aside so that you can see. So I'm going back under that one again, and then under the next one, and coming out. And each time I do this, um, you don't want it tight, but you want it to be snug as you go around. So... I'm just going to continue to do that. So I came out in between these two here. So now I'm going to go back around that one. And you're always going under two. And you're always coming. So maybe you can see how it's starting to form a little circle here. We're going to have to go a little bit. We're going to have to go a few rounds before you really start to see what I'm doing. But you're basically just going to keep doing this. And the fun thing about these stitches, this woven circle, is you can make the, you can use a variegated yarn and the circle as you weave it will start to change colors. Um, it really has different effects depending on uh, what kind of yarn you use. You can get some really highly defined circles. You can get some nice soft circles. Oh, good. You got, Rosalie, you got uh, work done on the banner. That's good. Once we set it up, I, I think that um, it gets super relaxing, and that's why I was really hoping that I could work on mine today. Um, I was having some problems on my website, so that required a bit of uh, sleuthing, which is dangerous because I do not know anything about websites. I know just enough to like really mess something up. Luckily, I don't think I did. I think it's working. And I'm also um, doing my class, uh, my Dream Learn Quilt class right now. Um, that's going on, so it's in its first week. So everybody's just sort of um, looking around the classroom and figuring everything out. But that's a really fun class. So here's what I've got so far. If everybody can see that. Let's keep going. So you can also make these as large as or as small um, as you want. So you could make a little circle and weave it. You could make a larger circle and weave it. Um, you could make a larger circle and weave part of it and leave some spokes 
um, exposed. You could cover the spokes completely. There's a lot of versatility in this stitch. And I love the idea that everything's happening on the top of the work. So, and I am going to stitch until I run out of thread and then I will stop and show you what this looks like as a finished stitch on the original piece. Does this look pretty clear? Let me know um, if you think um, that what I'm showing you is pretty clear because I can also slow it down and uh, we can start over again if you need another um, demo of how to do this. It's starting to look pretty. Some people call it like a little spider web stitch too. I like these stitches. All right, so a couple more, and I probably need to end my thread. So I'm gonna end it right there. So there's what we have so far. It's so cute. These are so cute. So I'm going to show you a finished one. Let's see. Here's a finished one that I did on the original banner, if you can see that. Yes, Suze Pargo. Um, she's like the thread whisperer. I love her. She's really good. Um, I think that Craftsy is still having a special um, where you can watch Unlimited for a dollar or something crazy like that for um, the next couple days. So if you're interested, um, she has a, Sue Spargo has a Craftsy class on there that really does give some really good information. Uh, if you're interested in really diving a little deeper into all of this um, dimensional embroidery, she's kind of the pro at it. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the pink. I think I'm really liking this pink. But if I use it here, I don't know if you guys remember, but in my rule of threes, um, I would add this some two other spots at least um, more if I felt like I needed to, but um, definitely in two other spots. So I'm going to just keep on weaving. Get it up there. There we go. And sometimes I like to really pack in as many rounds as I possibly can because it makes them really um, makes them really full and that's another way to do it too. Now there is another type of stitch that I wanted to um, tell you guys about that's another version of this stitch uh, and it's really more of a flower than a uh, woven circle. And uh, I have an example in a piece of embroidery that I have in my um, studio. So when we finish this one, I will show you that one and just can talk you through how to do it. It's really easy. 
um, it's probably easier than this one and it makes more of those um, kind of puffy flowery shapes that seem to be really popular right now. So I wanted you guys to know, we were talking about The Godfather the other night, I wanted you guys to know that not only did my 16-year-old and my husband power through The Godfather, uh, the first Godfather, they also powered through the number two, The Godfather number two, which is three hours and 45 minutes. Um which I totally forgot how long that was, but um, they, I watched most of it. They watched the whole thing the other night, so it's like some sort of Godfather marathon. And I have to say, in Godfather 2, I can't figure out who is more handsome, um, Al Pacino or Robert De Niro. They're both pretty handsome in that movie. So I think a couple more rounds and I'll probably be done with this one. Oh, so, okay, thanks, Rosalie. So Sue's class, I guess, is on sale right now on Craftsy for $19, which is worth every penny. And um, sounds like the free... Um, promotion that they had might be over might be over but yeah Sue's Sue's um, class is worth $19 it's it's a great class she's a great teacher and she does beautiful work it's really inspiring to look at let's see I think one more round and we can call it good. I think I'm going to call that one good. Let's make one more. I think I've got enough thread to make one more little weave here. One more. And we're good. All right. I like the pink too. I think I'm going to add some more. So um, I think I'm going to add that color. So I'll add some more of the pink. I'm not sure where yet. I've also got the this color of wool, um, which I cut out some flowers, and so I'm gonna add those in somewhere. Yeah, and I've also got, um, this is part of a, a, a skirt I bought at the thrift store years ago, and I've been slowly snipping and using wool on a, off of this for years, so I think I should add some of that in there too. So, um, yeah. So we're gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna pump up the color on this. Um, so there's your woven circle stitch, and as I said, here's the other version on um, the original banner. So there you have it. I was gonna show you another version uh, of. So I don't know. How easy it is for you to see the centers of these little flowers to make these you start with the same spokes that we did 
but you really um, have to have an un or an odd number. So in other words, here we have eight, you would need seven or you would need five. So in other words, you're going to have to come from rather than making one long piece that crosses each of these, you're going to need to start in the center and sort of space out uh, five or seven different stitches. So you do an uneven number and then to make this little um, piece right here, just the center part, you're going to weave under, over, under, over, under, over, all the way around. You're going to always do that. You're not going to go back and forth. You're not going to go backwards and weave through and then come back up. You're just going to weave under, over, under, over, all the way around. And that's going to give you the little center area of that, which is really cute. And so that's another way. It looks like she's also got some little French knots in here, too. This is... um something I have um, hanging on my wall in my studio that I love. Anyway, um, that's just another one. So now I think what I'm going to do is um, do some stitching around the leaves. So I was using my green Orifil same yarn to do some more chain stitching around here so I think I'll do that next and finish that up and then I'll show you the um, the bullion stitch oops sorry have some so again I've got double strand which is how I use that Orfil wool um, acrylic it's really nice so I'm just gonna start underneath the um, flower that I sewed down and what I'm going to do is just what I did here I'm going to do that on this one and make a um, just a little chain stitch going all the way up the the leaf so if you remember we come up and you come up right beside of it Make sure that thread tail is wrapped around that needle as it's coming up. And then pull it through so that you have a little chain stitch. Let's make another one. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to move that flower out of the way. So I'm just going to make this all the way up the little spine of the leaf. Some of you were adding sequins to um, your posy, and I love that idea. I actually um, had some beads pulled out that I was thinking I might add to this one, but I'm not. Um, I'm not sure where to use them yet. So, but I love the idea of adding a little bling to these guys. I just think they're so cute. So I'm just going to do that all the way up. Do a couple more. All right, so there you have it. So I'm just gonna start off with a new piece of thread and we'll try to make those bullion knots. So I think what I'm going to do is try to do those around one of the stitches. Wish me luck. It might go, it might be a disaster. We'll see. Sometimes it takes me a second to get into the groove of these stitches and other times I can do it right away. Let 
my memory, my muscle memory recall kicks in. So I'm going to use two strands for this as well. And you could use one strand of this wool. You could certainly do that. But I like the idea of the way that um, the three strands kind of um, pick up a little more detail. So I think I'm going to start right in here. And my plan is to go around this whole leaf. So I'm coming up right on the edge of this leaf. I'm not going into the wool of the leaf. I'm just doing right along the edge. And I uh, have come up right beside of it. And then I'm going to stick my needle in right beside of where I came up. And I'm going to come out... Um, I guess that's like a quarter inch away. And then the idea is, is that you will wrap the thread or the, the around the needle in and build up a stack that's as, uh, that's the same uh, distance or the same thickness as the space that you've left. So let's see if I can Let's see, I'll do counterclockwise. So I'm just gonna kind of stack them. So see how it looks like I have about the same amount of wraps as I do space right there. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna hold those in place and I'm gonna try to pull this gently into place. And then I'm gonna pull it around. Aha, I did it. So can you guys see that? So I pulled it back around and now um, my thread is back here again because I did all of the stitches and then I pulled them back around and I'm going to stick my needle down in here just to secure that first stitch. And I didn't actually count how many stitches I just did, but... So now I'm going to stick my needle up another quarter inch away from that first stitch. Actually, no, I take that back. So I'm going to come up right at the edge of that stitch because I have to get the thread on the front of the work. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick my needle back in just to the side of where I stuck it in the first time. Come out about a quarter inch away. And I'm going to wrap. I wish I'd counted my wraps. Did anybody count my wraps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks pretty good. So see, I, that there's my wraps. I have seven wraps. And then it's pretty equal to the space that I have there. So I'm going to... Hi, Sue! I'm going to pull this through. Do it gently so that I don't get a big old tangle. And then I'm going to pull it around. And you just have to sort of get it in place. Whoops. All right, there's two. So this time I think I'm gonna do a few more wraps and let's just see what it looks like. So I'll come up beside of it 
and again I'm gonna just come in beside of the applique I'm gonna stick my needle in right where, where I came up or right beside of where I came up and come out about a quarter inch away so let's do like um, I'll try like 15 wraps one two three four five six seven eight stack them all up 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's, you can see there's more wraps than space. And let's see what happens. I just pull that all the way through. Look how cute that is. You get like a little tiny loop. That's so cute. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 15 wraps from now on. All right. So let's keep going. All right, I come up a quarter inch away. Do 15. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And just so that you guys know, I'm not wrapping these like super tight, but I'm also not leaving a lot of slack either. I'm just sort of keeping them snug. I'm holding them in place with my finger here, and then when I get ready to pull the needle through, I'm definitely holding them in place with my thumb. You kind of have to work it through. It's not always easy to come through. And I think you do use milliner's needles for these because um, I think it's important for a stitch like this that um, the entire needle uh, not taper because if it tapers at the eye or if it gets larger at the eye and tapers at the end, um, you're gonna have trouble when you're pulling those stitches through. I just think that is so cute and it adds a lot of texture to those um, to those leaves and what's really cute is that this uh, well it's not cute but it's pretty this yarn or this thread that I'm using this Orifil thread um, has a lot of like it's just a really nice matte uh, textural little yarn to do stitches like this with so I think I can probably get one more out of the thread I have on the needle. So let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. Pull that through. holding them in place and then sticking it in to secure it. I think that is pretty cute. Can everybody see that? So let's keep going on that one. So you know it's so this is so much like um French knot. It's sort of like French knot on caffeine because you wrap, I don't know if you remember, but we wrapped our French knots in the last one. We wrapped them three times, or we wrapped the yarn three times around, or the thread, I should say, three times around the needle. Um so we're doing the same thing. We're still wrapping. We're just wrapping more times and going through, um, pulling the needle through several more wraps. Okay, let's keep going. These are fun. All right. So 
So pull it up right beside of the applique piece. Stick it in right beside of where it came up and come up a quarter inch away. And then wrap 15 times. a minute to pull it through. There we go. Let me do another one. That's really cute. I really like the way that adding something like this around one of these shapes just sort of makes it bigger. Um, it just sort of puts more emphasis on it. Hold it in place and pull it through. That one got a little bit twisted. And I think what you can do when they get a little twisted like that is um, just sort of loosen it, retighten it, and kind of pulling those stitches in, and it will. Um, Kind of they'll all just sort of line up in place. Yep. Hi, you guys. Oh, the Philadelphia Flower Show. That sounds wonderful. Wow. Hope you saw some really fun stuff. That sounds really fun. All right. That one's a little bit weird, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. So I think I'll make, I could probably fit two more right up at the edge there, and then um, I'm going to start adding, maybe just one more actually, I'm going to start adding some stitches someplace else with a different color. Maybe we'll add some more pink. See where this sort of needlework could really start to get addictive. Just like the Sasha Co. All right. So I think I'll end that. I can continue that on later on. What do you think? It's so cute. I hope you guys try that. That's really a cute stitch. So I'll keep on going around. And you know, I think I'll go around um, these other two of this uh, sort of mustardy yellow leaf. I'll do it with the same color thread, but I think I might do a different dimensional stitch around the outside of each of those so that each um, of the leaves has the same chain stitch through the center, same thread color, but different dimensional stitches because I think that's super cute. Or maybe I'll just do the same thing. I don't know. We'll see. 
but I think I'm going to add some more of the pink and I'm trying to figure out where I should do that. Hmm. What do you guys think? I'm really not sure. I could add it on a leaf. So I was going to show you where I, let me show you really quick. I did the bullion stitch around this green leaf on the original. And so you can see that's like a contrasty green as well. And let's see if I did it any place else. Nope. I think that was it. So it gives you another version. I was thinking, Daphne, I was thinking about the bottom two leaves. Do you think these guys right here, or do you think, I don't know, I could do the white leaves? What do you think with the pink? While I'm like trying to thread my needle. I mean, I think that's a good area to put the um, the pink in. So I think maybe you're right. Maybe I should try to do something there. The other thing I can do. Yeah, I think the white two. All right, bottom two white leaves. That sounds like a plan. All right. So let me see. Hmm. Maybe I'll start. Oh, so you guys were thinking the darker ones. I don't know. Let's try one of each. I don't, I really, it's hard to say, right? Let's see. Huh. I what about if we like do the gray one? The one that's kind of disappearing. What do you think? I think that one might be the one to do. I'm gonna try it. Okay. We're gonna do the gray one. So I think what I'm gonna do is um do a chain stitch coming up the stem. Actually, I think I'll do a running stitch coming up the stem. And because this is so many layers, I can't really rock the needle. I'll have to go, you know, just kind of stab. And if you guys, um, stab stitching, if everybody's familiar with that, it's like you take one action going in and one action going up because um, a running stitch is normally done like this, rocking the needle, but I can't do that uh, as easily in this section because it's very thick. So I'm just gonna stab stitch. And then what should I do? Like I could do, hmm. Decisions, decisions. Maybe I'll just do, hmm. Maybe I'll just keep doing a running stitch around part of it and then I'll go back in and do something else inside of the leaves. So I'll just outline them like this. I 
I think this is going to be good. I like this on the gray. Go around. I like that idea, Rosalie. I was even thinking after I finish um, the running stitch, I could do the chain stitch, but inside the leaf, like you're saying, but then I think I could also do some stitches around the outside because I just really love. Um, the effect of having um, that that dimension around the outside of the leaf. So I think I could do both. I think I know what I'm going to be doing tonight. Yeah, you can already tell. I mean, it's already starting to show up so much better. My husband is always um, getting home around the time that I'm doing these Facebook Live videos. And um, I think I've mentioned before that my studio here is in my basement. And he rides his bike to work and from work every day. Um, and he comes in and out with his bike um, on the opposite side of the basement. So um, he keeps threatening to make an appearance on, t on, uh, on one of my Facebook Lives. Um, so I might let him. I don't know. We'll see. He always walks in like he's going to march onto the camera. Yeah, I'm really liking this pink a lot. It's looking really cute. So, you know, I could even go back in and weave a contrast color through here, through these stitches like I did over here. Um, there's lots of possibilities. I could also... Um, Add in a bunch of French knots in different places and sort of shade it in a little bit, like add darker gray with a little pink mixed in. Like a 
couple more stitches out of the length of thread that I have left. All right. Finish that one off. That is so cute. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more. So I think I'll finish the outside of the leaf and that'll be it for tonight. I'm going to keep working on it, I think. Does everybody feel like they could try one of the woven circles? What are you thinking? And what about the um, the bullion the bullion stitch? That one, as I was looking over at the original project, I used that in another place that I, I'll show you before um, we sign off for tonight so that you can see another version of it that I did with a variegated thread. I knew I'd done it with a variegated thread somewhere. You know, Tamara, they are fun. It's like once you figure it out and you get it and you feel the texture, you get so excited. Of course, I'm easily amused when it comes to embroidery stitches. I love them all. And I will tell you guys that I have a Pinterest board. If, if you are over on Pinterest at all and are interested, I have a Pinterest board with embroidery stitches. And every time uh, I see an embroidery stitch that looks interesting and fairly easy to do, I put it in that board. Um, and there are some really fun ones. So if you're interested and you find yourself on Pinterest, um, check them out because there's so many fun little stitches that are not hard at all. Yes, Daphne, you're gonna try some, yeah. And, and Sue, she gets really fancy in that class. She starts doing a lot of like serious weaving um, that looks really fun. When I was at QuiltCon, someone showed me a project that they had done of Sue Spargo's, um, and it was absolutely stunning. So, uh, takes a lot of time to do those dimensional stitches, but they are really worth it. They're so fun and really, really pretty, really dramatic. It just adds a lot of, lot of, uh, interest. So let me tie this one off because I finished that and before I decide where I'm going to go next, I'll take that one. That looks good, you guys. So I'm going to add, I, I know I'll add some more stitches around the outside of it. Um, I'm not sure what, but you know, that's part of the fun, trying to figure out what comes next. And I think probably to contrast with adding this bright wool, uh, over on the gray, I'm thinking that I will add some of this, um, my favorite, um, as I've heard it called, baby puke yellow, um, over here, just to sort of add some interest. I'm not sure I'm going to do it with the white leaves yet, but there'll be something I will figure out. So that's it for tonight. I'm going to turn the camera back around. Yes, uh, do check out the Pinterest board. There's some fun stitches on there. Um, there's even a way to make like a chain stitch um, 
into a heart shape, which is um, kind of fun. And oh, I wanted to show you the bullion stitch on the original project. So um, these were a little inconsistent, but what was cool was that those um, that's a variegated thread in there. So that's kind of what it looks like with a variegated thread. My stitches are definitely not as uniform as Sue's. Um, but that's part of the fun is learning on a piece like this. So um, our next Facebook Live is tomorrow. And I think it's scheduled for 530. But I just found out from my son that he has been invited to um, go to an escape room. Um, so I may have to switch the time around a little bit and I apologize in advance, but I will figure that out tonight and I'll put an event so that we can all um, hopefully meet up and um, I'll do some more stitches tomorrow night. But in the meantime, I'm going to work on mine. I hope that you will work on yours and thank you all for sharing what you've been working on. It's just really fun to see all the different versions. If um, you are tuning in and you would like the pattern but you don't have it, um, there's a link below to download the pattern from my shop. And um, that's all for tonight. So I hope that you guys tune in tomorrow. Um, it will, uh, I'll announce it very soon. Let me just, let me figure out what he's doing and I will announce it very soon. So thank you all for tuning in as always. You make this fun so thank you have a wonderful day slash evening and i will hopefully see you tomorrow bye bye